Yo, yo. Well, how's it going? What's up, brother? I'm going good. How you doing? I'm good. Um, <laughs> you weren't supposed to be here just a couple weeks ago. Um, can you walk us through what the last 13 days have been like since you arrived here from the time you confirmed the fight? Um... Well, I arrived here yesterday, so the last one day since I arrived here. No, I mean, like, from the time you agreed oh. to the fight up till when you came here. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, I was just sitting there minding my own business, chilling in Toronto, and then all of a sudden I get a call, and they ask me if you want to fight, and you know me, I love to fight. So uh, I was excited for the opportunity. It was a huge opportunity, and I just couldn't say no. So got right back to work, called my coaches, called my team. We all said, let's do it, and... um I'm ready. And it's no ordinary short notice fight, right? Like, on top of the stakes, the five rounds, you were just dealing with Ramadan as well. Um, so, like, what were all the considerations that you went through, or I guess what was, like, the most important thing to figure out? I mean, most important thing most of the time when you have a fight is where's your mentality at? Where's your mind at? Because you could sit there and train your body for eight weeks, feel the best you can feel, and then if you just feel something trigger in your head, something where you don't feel right, like the whole fight, the whole camp will be worth nothing. So during Ramadan, my mind is the strongest it's ever been. Spiritually, mentally, like it just puts me on a whole different level. So to know that my mental game was 100%, I didn't care what my body game was. I didn't care what the, the weight cut was. I didn't care what the, the rounds were because I knew mentally I could get through anything. And I know that for me, like it's all about God's plan. And I felt like God put me in that position at that right time to be in that right shape for this one moment. Because this moment right here is where careers are made, where, where legendary stories are told. And to be able to do that off of that, I want people to sit there and be like, how? What did you do? What are you taking? There's nothing that nobody could deny me for after I win this fight Saturday night. Yeah, and um, like comparing what you went through to Gilbert, it's different, right? Because he just went through a camp and he just fought. Uh, it wasn't the toughest fight in the world, but like, do you think this is a a more difficult thing for him to turn around after just fighting, or is it kind of equal? Not really. I mean, for 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 any fighter to have two fights off of one camp is the best thing ever, right? Because you know you didn't take really no injuries in a, a Masvidal fight. Then they tell you, hey, you want another payday in a couple of weeks? And you're like, oh, for sure, I'm down uh, because you're in shape, you feel good. Um, but for me, it's it's different because, you know, I was in Miami. I saw it. I felt the energy down there. So I had the mentality of feeling good. But then you still have to get your body right. You still have to, all right, we have to put the rounds in right now and see where we are. We have to see where our timing is. We have to see where our distance level is, our wrestling is, our cardio is, our grappling is. Um, so it's a lot different for me. But, no, it's still obviously you still need respect for taking a fight because you could have sat there and won the Mazadal fight and, you know, sat in the corner and be like, yo, sat on your place. I said, I'm not fighting anybody but for the title. So for him to accept a fight like me, it's going to be tough because you're going from fighting a guy like Masvidal who's not a, as hungry as I am. He has all the money in the world. Now you're going against a starving dog, a guy that wants it more than you do, a guy that's going to die in there. And how are you going to deal with that? And uh, when Gilbert was in here, he said that both of you have been guaranteed a title shot. Whoever wins this fight, that's your understanding as well, correct? Yeah, that's all I needed to hear. I got, you know, you go through every fight and you're you're wondering what else is next. What do I need to do? Who do I need to be? Is it going to be one more, two more? And I was sitting in that, you know, that point where it's like, all right, well, maybe I'll wait for Usman in July. And we were talking about that fight, and it was either July or August. And I'm sitting there like, all right, I could go through a whole camp, wait all the way to August, and you can still lose a fight. You're going against ex champion against like Usman. Or I could just take this moment right here, right now. I feel great. Uh, I know I could be ready for this fight and get a guaranteed title shot after that. It's like that's what you always fight for. You always fight for, to to want the gold. The gold is the the gold, and that's what I wanted. So once they said that, I didn't hear need to hear nothing else. And just last thing for me, um, as far as when that title fight could play out, uh, what are you thinking is going to happen here? Because Leon saying maybe October for him. Uh, mentioned Abu Dhabi. Do you think, is there any way you slide in and maybe get that spot over Colby, or do you think you're going to have to sit out like eight, nine months or something to wait for it? I mean, for me, I think if I put on a great performance this weekend and, you know, get a tremendous finish or something, they're going to Abu Dhabi. You think you're going to have Leon fight Colby in Abu Dhabi? No, you're going to have me fight in Abu Dhabi. And it'll be like the dream come true. And I think that'll be like how the story's supposed to be written. But I still got to, I just got to do my work this weekend. And I don't really care when nothing else is because I know my next fight's going to be for the belt. Well, all over here.
So coming out of uh, Ramadan, of course, is you know, going through it, you're, you're eating at different times. Like there's a little more, more of a restriction, of course, of when you can eat, when you can drink, all that kind of thing. How does that kind of affect your body, especially going right into uh, a fight? Yeah, you know, you're, Ramadan, you're not eating or drinking from sunrise to sunset. So for me, I'm still training during that time. I had a teammate that fought a couple of weeks ago, Ignacio Bahamundes, got the W in Miami. So I had to be in the camp with him. I had to train with him. I had to give him rounds. So for me, I'm going training in the mornings, and I'm going throughout the whole day without eating or drinking and then having another practice right before I break my fast. So, you know, obviously it's different. And I was having to put the right stuff in my body, the right uh, carbs, the right proteins, because I wanted to feel good the next day when I train. So all of that changes when it's Ramadan, especially when I didn't have a camp. You know, your mom wants to make all the best foods. You want to eat all of her desserts, and you're having a bunch of family time. You're relaxed. So... But I think the difference is, is like, when I, while I was training and I was fasting, I was, like, uncomfortable. And there's not a lot of guys that thrive in being uncomfortable. There's guys, oh, you know, I'm going to take this round off or I'm going to chill. But I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think when it comes to fighting, especially a five-round fight, fourth and fifth round, you get uncomfortable. And that's where the mindset comes to the fact. That's where my mindset from Ramadan is going to play a big factor, where I'm going to be a lot stronger than him mentally there. And we're going to see who breaks first. Is this the closest you've fought to the end of Ramadan? I mean, I've had a camp during – I have a couple multiple camps during it. Uh, obviously, I didn't consider this a camp uh, at all. And then I had the last week of training with Ramadan. Um, but like I said, there's no excuses with this one. I think mentally it's given me a, a heads up, a one up on him with there. But Saturday night I'm going to show you guys why Ramadan – everybody should be doing Ramadan. Now, Gilbert was talking a bit about when they were trying to negotiate this fight, figure out the fight, uh, the fact that you were kind of asking for 175 pounds uh, first. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, whoever who wants to cut weight is like you're taking a short notice fight. Uh, I sat there. I was in Canada actually doing a, a charity event, and I was like, man, I got to try some of the poutine out here. And then they called me with the fight. I was like, bro, I'm about to sit down and eat this fries right, right here. Let's, let's see if we get this. But uh, for me, it didn't bother me. I don't, I don't think the weight cut's going to be an issue. Uh, obviously, I'm going to ask for it if I get it. If not, whatever. And he said that you also asked for the five rounds. It was your side. Why did you ask for five rounds? Because it's a championship fight to me. It, the winner of this fight is fighting for the belt. I think this fight could be a title fight right here. So I wanted to have that feel. I wanted to have that championship feel. I wanted to make it feel like this is my title shot. I wanted it to be that big. This fight is that big. This fight should be for a title. This fight is up there. We're the two best welterweights in the division, I think. And Saturday night, it should be... For a title. So in my head, my mind, this is the biggest fight of my life, biggest fight of my career, and I'm going to show up Saturday night. If you do earn this opportunity and, and you know you go out there and there you could be the, the, the backup way in for, for the next title fight, uh, is that something you'd be interested in doing? No, I'm not going to be a backup. Okay. I'm the, the front up. So I win this fight. I, I'm next up. I'm not cutting weights for nothing. Uh, they already promised us a shot. So, yeah, Thank you. Well, will you be uh, – if they decide to do – Colby versus Leon in Abu Dhabi. Would that personally offend you more than, than anything that is? Because I know that you've had your, your issues in the past, but that, would that personally be one of the, the, the biggest lights to you? Nah, man. Uh, you know, I don't take anything personally in this sport. Obviously, it's a business, whatever. So that's what I've come to learn, to stop taking things so hard. For me, it's like as long as I got promised that my next fight's going to be for the belt, that's all I needed to hear. And, and you, I, I suppose it's just that, like, you've got two guys, Colby bigger in – you know, America and then Leon in, in the UK, and that's and, and I know that you're you're a, you're big in, in America, but also over there as well. I, I'm sure that that would be like the ideal for you to to go to the the Middle East and, and win your belt there. Yeah, for sure. To have an uh, Arab American fighting in uh, Abu Dhabi in front of his people that has the same blood as those people, speaks the same language as those people, it'd be huge for them, especially for that market. And I think that me being a champion will show in the UFC how big it could be. Obviously, we have Muslim champions, but it's different when you have an Arab Muslim champion uh, and a market like Abu Dhabi. When you, you get the, the, the win on Saturday, will there be any message to, to Kobe, or are you laser-focused at this point uh, after after Gilbert Burns on Leon Edwards? Yeah, no. I mean, I don't really care which one of them win it. To me, it's whoever has the belt. That's what I'm coming for. Uh, Bilal, over here again. Other way. Yep, there you go. Oh, my bad. No, you're good. Um, so, you know, I, I don't like to ask about 
betting lines and betting, but it's kind of unavoidable here because this is the fourth fight in a row. They have you as the underdog. And my question to you is, why do you feel like the bookies, even some fans, haters, whatever you want to call them, are still doubting you after such an impressive win streak that you're on? I mean, people just don't understand how much work I put into this. People just don't see what we do in the gym. My family, my friends, my coaches, my team, they know what we do, the work we put in. The, the hours we put in the sweat, people are like, why are you going to take this fight? You're on an eight-fight fight winning streak. You could sit there and wait for your own, your full camp. You could sit there and wait wait it out. But they don't understand how bad I want this. They don't know what I'm willing to do for this. And Saturday night, it's going to keep surprising. It's going to keep shocking people. And I want to keep – I want to hear the excuses. It's like, you know, you beat Sean Brady. Oh, well, Sean Brady sucks. You beat Wonder Boy. Well, Wonder Boy can't wrestle. You beat this guy, Maya. He sucks. Luke A.O. He can't wrestle. There's excuses for every single guy. So now I'm the one taking the fight on two weeks' notice. I'm the one who's fighting the guy that just won. I'm the one guy who's sitting there coming off of Ramadan. What excuse are you going to give after I beat Gilbert Burns Saturday night? No excuses for me, man. None at all. And like you said, beating Sean Brady, a lot of people were saying that's a grappler on grappler fight. And you come in there, knock him out. First knockout since 2016. What did that do for your confidence? I mean, it, it didn't do nothing for my confidence. I'm always confident. I know what we're capable of. I know that these guys, when they go in there and they feel what I'm capable of doing, they break. And I knew that I could be able to do that to these guys. But I go into every fight with a different mindset. I'm not going to sit there and strike with Wonder Boy. I'm not going to sit there and grapple with Maya. So... I do different things differently every fight. And I think that's what puts gives me the one up on a lot of these guys. Gilbert Burns doesn't know what I'm going to bring to the table. I know what he's going to do. He doesn't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, just wanted to get your thoughts on the main event between Aljamain Sterling and Sahuya. I mean, it's a great fight. Uh, I'm excited to see how it goes. I think, obviously, the time off will play a factor. and But Sahuya is so strong mentally, and he comes with a different mindset to the fight game I think he's you know calculated calculated with everything he does and you see it kind of like with his breakdown videos but I think Aljamain is very smart too he understands what he's good at and I think the grappling is going to be really fun and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of uh, striking on the feet Bilal over here on your left do you think that your pace and kind of relentless pressure is going to be too much for Burns if this fight does make it to the championship rounds yeah, I for sure think that I play a factor. I think that I have one of the best gas tanks in the division, and uh, not a lot of guys can handle it when I'm in there. And like I said, it, when it comes down to the fourth or fifth round, it comes down to heart and will and hunger, and I think that I have more than that than anybody. And is there a part of Gilbert's game that you've kind of like zoned in on just to like, you know, he's really strong in that specific area. That is there something that you've been really uh, looking at? I mean, he's pretty well-rounded. He, he's good everywhere, so I think – Everybody in the top five is good everywhere. But I've been studying the top five for so long and analyzing everything. And I always, when I watch a fight, I don't just watch it as a fan anymore. I watch it as, oh, what I would do there, what I would do there. And like I said, I was in the stands watching him against Masvidal. So I'm thinking about what I would do in that situation. So I had my own mindset, my own game plan of what I think I could do. And uh, I definitely feel like you guys will be able to see it Saturday night. Thank you.